Hey there, Chatting with Crow's Nest Craft, and today I'm going to be doing a budget D&D &D mini. Uh, I usually do dollar store stuff, but I got this guy from Five Below. This is a King Kong toy. Uh, I bought it for a few dollars, and I'm going to be turning this into a Balgura. So I'm going to do some modifications and a little bit of light sculpting and turn this guy into what I want him to look like. So let's get started. So first, I have to unwrap King Kong. So once I have King Kong out of the package, I'm gonna check where all of his joints are, cause I wanna make sure that I know where I'm putting super glue to freeze all those joints. So it seems like both arms move and so does the head. What I also have to look for are the mold lines that I need to remove with a hobby knife. On this dude's butt, there's some writing from where he was made, so I'm gonna take a hobby knife, I'm gonna shave that off, along with some other mold lines on him. Now that the mold lines and writing are gone, I'm going to take some gel super glue and I'm going to glue his head and his arms still so that way they can't rotate and move anymore. A good thing about the gel super glue is it's a little thicker than regular super glue and can be used as a filler on the joints as well as a glue to keep it from moving. Now the next couple of steps I'm going to be building the pieces I want to add with this JB Weld epoxy putty. Some people like to use green stuff. Um, I get this because it's a lot cheaper. Or when I say a lot cheaper, this is like $6 for a roll and it's easier to find. You can find it at most Walmarts and hardware stores. This specific one is for plumbing. So I'm going to use it to make his bracelets here. and. It does harden quickly, so I have to do bits at a time, so I'm going to be splitting it up in between what I build. Here I'm making the tusks and the bracelets, and then I'll move on to a few other things. So now that that hardened, I'm going to move on and I'm going to make some rings that are going to go on and border the bracelets, just to give them a little bit more style. The cool thing about this epoxy putty is that it sticks to whatever you put it on once it hardens, so it's just going to stick right to those areas like a glue. That way I don't need to take it off and put it back on with super glue or anything like that. Alright, the last thing I'm going to sculpt is a loincloth and belt. I originally wasn't going to make a loincloth, but after looking at the art that's in the monster manual for D&D, I decided this is already really close to exact, so I'm going to add the loincloth as well to make it look like it came right out of the monster manual. And once I have the front and the back of the loincloth made, I'm going to add a belt to connect the two. So now I want to make a base, and I'm going to switch mediums over to oven baked clay. So I'm going to flatten out a little circle with my fingers of the oven baked clay. When I have a nice looking circle, I'm going to take one of these texture rollers that a friend 3D printed for me and make it look like stone. So starting off with a base coat, I'm going to hit it with this dark orange all over the fur bits. I'm starting with the orange because the other color I'm going to be doing is a dark blue and it's a lot easier to cover up the orange with a dark blue if I mess up than cover up the dark blue with orange, you know what I mean?
Here I'm going to be using a medium sized flat brush. That way I can get really good coverage on one coat. Next I'm going to be hitting the chest and the face and feet and hands with a base coat of a dark blue. Here I'm using a slightly smaller brush just to be a little bit more accurate so I don't stray too far onto the orange so I don't have to go back and fix it. Next, I'm going to be basing the bracelets or bracers, whatever you want to call them. I'm going to be basing them with this aged bronze that I have. Back to a slightly wider brush to get better coverage on the bracers. So I'm now hitting the loincloth and belt with a very light brown color. At this point I hadn't decided if I wanted it to be a fur or leather loincloth, so I was still just kind of using a color that would have been neutral to either a fur or a leather, so I went with a light brown. While I'm already doing some detail, I decided to hit the inside of the mouth with a dark pink. So now I'm going to be hitting the base with my favorite stone color, and that is a slate grayish blue. It's a very simple color for a base, but I think that it looks great, especially contrasting with the orange. Now I'm mixing red ink in a sepia wash to make a wash for the orange coat of fur. I'm going to be very careful not to spread it around too much. It is hard because a wash and an ink, they are super runny. So I'm going to be careful to keep it on the fur parts. Now I'm dry brushing with a lighter orange just to get the start of my highlights on the fur. For my dry brushing brush, I just use some makeup brushes I get from the dollar store. Now I'm mixing a sepia wash and a black wash together to put on the aged bronze so that way it gives it a little bit more of an aged effect. I'm again just being careful with the wash not to put too much on so it runs all over the blue. So I'm being very careful with the amount that I'm putting on the bracers. I'm also going to toss some of my homemade black wash on the base while I'm at it.
Now for the blue skin parts. I'm going to be using a blue wash from Vallejo and I'm going to be adding a little bit of my homemade black wash to darken it up a little bit. The dark blue is a wash that I definitely don't want bleeding with other colors. So again, just being super careful with it. I actually use a heat gun in between real quick just to start the drying process so it doesn't run. After all the shading, I'm going to be moving on to a light blue and an even lighter blue and use the two to blend into each other to get some highlights done on the blue parts of the chest and the face. I'm focusing the highlighting on the muscles for the most part to really make them pop and make them look like a super buff boy. So now I'm going to hit the teeth and a few other areas with some more fine details. I'm going to be hitting the eyes here with this bright red. I'm also going to add a little bit of a pink in the eyes to give it that little bit of a glow effect from the red. I'll then off camera just do some highlighting on the fur and on all the other parts that I missed. And voila, look how gorgeous this guy came out. I absolutely love him. I don't have many actual demons from like the lore, so having a Balgura is going to be very useful in the future. These demonic fellas are tough, dumb, and violent, so they make a great dungeon boss for a low to mid-level party. These guys are challenge rating 5. I will say be careful with that because I think that they have some spells and they can definitely pack a punch. They also take a punch really well, so you can put them up against a pretty decent party and they'll hold their own. This was a fun little build. I had a blast and I got a mini of a monster I've been wanting for a while. Hey, so thanks for sticking around. Uh, we finished up the Balgura. I had a blast making him. I'd actually been looking for a gorilla of a similar scale for a while to turn into a Balgura. Because, you know, it's a pretty easy thing to turn into a D&D &D monster because it's just a gorilla with tusks and some cool bracelets. And that's really all I had to do to him, for the most part, other than the paint job. It was a pretty easy modification. So, yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to check out more of my videos, I got more on this channel. I also have a TikTok and an Instagram you can check out. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.